question is, where in the Constitution does the President derive the authority to send federal law enforcement officers to the streets of American cities against the will of the elected officials in those cities? Yes, well, what you're referring to is Portland and 40 U.S. Code 1315 gives DHS the ability to deputize officers in any department or agency, like ICE, Custom and Border Patrol, and Secret Service, quote, as officers and agents, they can be deputized for the duty of, uh, in connection with the protection of property owned or occupied by the federal government and persons on that property. And when a federal courthouse is being lit on fire, commercial fireworks being shot at it, being shot at the officers, I think that that falls pretty well within uh, the limits of 40. U.S. Code 1315. Um, on Portland, I'm sending agents to Portland as well as uh, plans for Chicago. Why are these the right people to send? Uh, my understanding, these agents often work on uh, human smuggling, drug trafficking, uh, things like that. Do they have the right skill set, whether it's gun violence in Chicago or quelling um, unrest uh, in Portland? Well, first, let me add, um, they haven't been sent to Chicago. These DHS officials are currently in Portland, Portland protecting a courthouse. Uh, we do believe they're the right individuals for that, as does 40 U.S.C. 1315, the United States Code. Um, it's egregious what's happening, the frequency jammers, the Peloton air rifles in Portland. It's being depicted as this peaceful scene, I can assure you. It's anything but that, um, where you've had barricades trying to keep officers in the Hartfield, Hatfield, excuse me, courthouse, um, injury to a Border Patrol team member's leg, injuries to the head, shoulder, and back of a deputy U.S. Marshal. A U.S. Marshal impaled his right hand on a board filled with nails set out by the protesters. Uh, this is not a peaceful scene. I'm very thankful to our U.S. Marshals and ATF and others who are acting in accordance with a, a statute and protecting a federal building um, and doing so at great cost to themselves. A protester into custody. So I've been told by DHS that there is insignia um, indicating that they're law enforcement. They, in the case you're referencing, did identify themselves to the individual um, being obtained, uh, but that they don't identify themselves to crowds because it would put them at great risk. And I think you can see that, as I noted, when they're sticking their hands into boards left out by some of the rioters. Yes. Yeah, the president says he wants to send these forces to other cities like Chicago of cities that, where the federal property isn't necessarily under attack. What are they going to do when they get to Chicago and these other cities with higher crime rates, higher shooting rates, higher murder rates? If the president's worried about that, what are they going to do? What are they going to arrest people? Uh, I think you're getting ahead of the president here. He's, he's made no announcements as to who's going where. He's very discouraged by the violence that he's seen in Chicago. It's why he sent um, a very strong letter to Mayor Lightfoot offering help because she's clearly unable to control her streets um, and the governor as well, unable to control that area. Um, when you see the fact that there were 49 officers who were injured in this egregious video of them being lambasted with um, rioters with umbrellas shielding from view that they were throwing projectiles and 49 officers injured. Not only that, the, the poor citizenry of Chicago, where 12 were murdered this weekend, um, 70 shot alone. Uh, it's incredible what we're seeing in Chicago. He's offered his help, and we encourage the mayor to take it uh, and to be forthright about the situation in her state, much like uh, the governor of Missouri was in working with us on Operation Legend to protect the people of Missouri. But the leaders of these cities don't necessarily want unmarked police officers patrolling their streets the way we, we've seen in Portland and with the premise that they're protecting federal property there. The leaders in these cities don't want this sort of paramilitary they're, police force. They're offered the assistance of DOJ as was done um, where you've had FBI surge in the case of Operation Legend. Um, so when you have each weekend more than a dozen people getting shot in your city, perhaps it's time, um, more than a dozen killed I should say, and children, perhaps it's time to say I need the help of the federal government because I'm, what I'm doing is simply not working when more people are dying on the streets of Chicago than Afghanistan and Iraq. It's a tragedy. What if they don't say this? Yes. Paul, well, he thinks the mayor and the governor should work together to take control of the streets of New York City, where in some places we've seen 600% surge in violence over last year. So he thinks they should work together. It's ultimately the power of the, the mayor uh, to enforce and the, the governor to enforce the police power of their states. That power rests with them, but they can partner with the federal government in the event that they're unable to control the violence in their cities. And that's certainly what we've seen from Mayor de Blasio, uh, who seems to have um, a, not a hard time criticizing police officers, but an awful 
awfully hard time controlling the streets of New York City. Yes. Can I have a couple of questions? The first one is the president in the last year has tweeted about the concerns about mail-in voting. So he's obviously concerned about the integrity of the U.S. election uh, and certainly internal sabotage. But why are we not hearing from the president about the fears about external sabotage? For example, coming out of the U.K. today, there is a parliamentary committee report that says that Russia influenced the Scottish referendum. There are questions about Brexit. But we've really not heard the president put the Kremlin on notice with respect to the U.S. election. Will we hear from him today on that? The president's put the world on notice that our election systems must be secure. Um, this is under this president in 2018. He articulated the first uh, full cyber strategy for the United States since 2003. In 2019, he extended the National Emergency Declaration on Foreign Election Interference. He routinely engages with Congress on election security. Um, Participating okay, in at least 26 reports. elections security specific hearings. Um, he signed legislation, $71 million, and so on and so forth. And that's quite a contrast to the Obama-Biden the Obama -Biden administration, who, when told of meddling in 2016, did nothing. And in fact, Susan Rice told the White House cyber team to stand down and, quote, knock it off. When they, floated, um, uh, when they floated options to combat Russian cyber attacks. And even Obama's cyber chief, Michael Daniel, has confirmed the stand down order. It's been um, in office now more than three years. I'm asking what's been done now. I and just, given these fresh concerns, what are we going to hear from the president? So on that? what's been done now? I just listed off three or four things for you, and I'm happy to go through more. I, we can talk about the 71 million uh, in legislation Russia. on election security. Uh, we can talk about the 15 million for election reform activities. We can talk about legislation making more than 805 million available to states. And when it comes to mail and voting, um, I would point you to the fact that there's a Wall Street Journal article just out today, and it talks about the dark omen for November and the absolute catastrophe in New York City that we are a month into the election after the voting and we still don't know who the winners are of some of those races and Governor Cuomo decided that he would prepay postage for the ballots and what that meant was that the post office didn't put a postage stamp noting the date uh, of, of the ballot so as they're collecting these ballots in for a month as you asked me about this so I'm going to answer so for a month They've been collecting ballots with no postmark date. And in fact, what they found is 19% of ballots have been rejected in Queens, 28% rejected in Brooklyn. There are questions about mail, mass mail out voting. And I know you don't want to hear them, which is why you talk over me, but I encourage you to read the op-ed. Yes. On the China vaccine research, this yes. is very You've important. You've gotten two questions, which is more than some of your colleagues. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, okay, you don't want to engage. Um, okay, you don't want to engage. 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 Okay, you don't want to engage.